and welcome to another episode of A Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Antec custom built gaming PC that I bought at a garage sale for $5. As in every episode, we're going to take a look around the computer first. I'm going to open it up, show you the inside, um, and then hopefully we can get this thing up and running because I have cannibalized this thing to death. Um, I think it's missing a hard drive. I don't think it has any RAM in it. Um, it's missing some other stuff too. So we're going to have to go into the closet, find all the right parts, put it back together, and then hopefully we can get it up and running with a live Linux uh, distro from a USB flash drive. Let's take a look around the system and see what kind of condition the case is in. So we are looking at the front right now. You can see the Antec logo for the case. There are some indicator lights right here. There are two USB 2.0 ports on the front and you can, you can see right here a air intake vent. As we open the front panel, um, you can see I have cannibalized the DVD drive that is gone and in another system. Um, this CD drive is not functional, unfortunately. Um, there's a floppy drive right here, haven't tested it. Uh, you can see the indicator lights more clearly. There is a power button right here and a reset button above that. Um, as you can see, there are four spaces for optical drives and then two spaces for some 2.5 inch um, floppy drives or maybe a media drive, um, whatever you want to do with that. Um, and then the computer does have these nice little, um, if I can get off, these nice little tabs. They just pull out here and then insert the drive. And you can see it, it is quite dusty. So let me go ahead and put that back. Um, I should probably clean this out, but that would require effort on my part. No, thank you. As we move over, you can see the right side of the system is completely bare. There are some minor scratches and scuffs on the case on this side, as you can see, um, but nothing major. Uh, the top is the same. There's nothing on the top, but uh, once again, you can see some minor scratches and scuffs um, in the paint. As we move to the back, you can see our power supply. There is the power switch right here. Nice clunky power switch. Um, if I do remember correctly, I believe this Antec power supply was having some sort of issue. Um, and we are going to find out what that issue is when we turn it on. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see if it even works because uh, I bought this computer probably about six months ago and my memory uh, does not serve me well when it comes to the system. So uh, let's go ahead and move on from that. Uh, moving down, you can see a PS2 port for a keyboard and mouse. There are two USB 2.0 ports, if I can get my finger in the right place, there we go. Um, you can see a serial port, a parallel port for printing, um, all of our various audio interfaces below that. Um, and we have a plethora of options with this motherboard. Uh, we, you can see there is a uh, digital audio uh, input and then our analog audio inputs below that. Um, so you have quite a few features. This motherboard um, is actually surprisingly versatile. So um, below that, there are two more USB 2.0 ports, an Ethernet port. Uh, you can see our video card. I believe this computer is rocking a GeForce uh, 5200. I think that's right. I'll put an annotation in for that. But you can see a DVI port, S video, and VGA. There is a Ethernet card right here, um, wireless card, and then below that are just some empty slots. Finally, as we move back a vent, you can see there is an air outtake vent on the back of the PC equipped with a Antec fan. And moving to the left side of the PC, ta-da, you can see a nice little window right here. This is composed of some kind of plastic. It's not glass. I'm not sure what kind of plastic. It might be maybe plexiglass or something like that. I'm not 100% positive. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty cool case to come with a computer for 5 bucks. I was actually thinking about building a gaming PC out of this, but instead I put it in a fit my gaming PC in a 15 year old case and if you haven't seen my disguise your gaming PC episode I'm going to put a link in the description and maybe a uh, annotation in the video um, go ahead and check that out because it's actually a really cool concept but yeah this is definitely a neat feature for a garage sale find this is a case that you could still use to build a modern PC so really I think we're done with the outside tour of the computer Let's go ahead and pop open the case and take a look at the internal components. Alright, so we are inside the system and as you can see cable management with this thing is an absolute catastrophe. I mean, I've just taken so many components out of this. Um, I, I, I didn't even bother to put anything back, so it's just awful. Um, I have no idea what goes to what. Uh, they're just scattered throughout the case. I mean, really, this is horrible. Uh, if we want to run the system, I'm definitely going to have to organize it because half these cables are going to get cotton fans. 
Um, and then who knows what will happen after that. Maybe a fire. That'd be interesting. But anyway, starting from the top, you can see that this computer is equipped with a Antec 350 watt power supply. Now moving over, there is our CD-ROM drive. I showed you that earlier when we popped open the front panel of the case. Under this heatsink is a Pentium 4 CPU, and then when we boot it up, we can see what the clock rate is and if it is using hyper-threading. Um, I'm not really sure. I think it's around 2 gigahertz, um, but once again, it's been six months and I don't really remember. This board though, this motherboard, um, is actually pretty impressive. As you can see down here, it is fully equipped with solid state capacitors. Um, so this is an absolutely lovely motherboard. Um, you can see the CMOS battery right here. Um, there are some more solid state capacitors around the PCI ports. Um, I believe this motherboard is also equipped with SATA and you saw all of the various audio options we had um, on the back of the system. Yep, there are some SATA ports, probably uh, a very early revision, maybe SATA 2 at most, um, but they're probably SATA 1 ports. And then looking at the bottom of the motherboard, um, there is a AGP slot, which the video card is housed in. And then below that, there are one, two, three, four, five PCI expansion slots. Taking a deeper look at this computer, you can see the heatsink for the North Bridge. There are two slots for some DDR333 RAM, which I believe I have a couple sticks in the back, and hopefully those sticks are good so we can boot this computer up into a live operating system. I'm not going to deal with a hard drive. I forgot. No, you know what? Actually, the owner, which made me really angry, but right in front of me, the owner opened the case, pulled out both of the hard drives, and then took them. I mean, which is a smart move on his part, because that means I can't steal any of his information, which, you know, I don't. I wipe the hard drives um, when I receive the computers. But, you know, most people don't do that, and they leave all their information on the hard drives, and then, you know, if someone could buy the computer and steal all of their personal information, their passwords, email addresses, um, stuff like that, they leave it all on there. Um, for accountability's sake, I do wipe my hard drives when I receive the computers, um, but he seemed like a pretty smart guy, so... He yanked those out real quick. Um, he had no issues either. He just took a screwdriver, um, yanked them out, and then said, here, $5. So <laughs> that's not bad. Pretty smart guy. Um, on the front of the case, you can see our air intake vent covered with some kind of green shroud. Not sure if it lights up or not. Um, I think it's just for display purposes. I don't think, I don't see any LEDs or anything in it. Um, and I'm not sure if this fan has a speed controller or not. I don't believe it does because this fan looks um, like the exact same fan and it is not equipped with a speed controller. They are sleeve though, which is pretty nice. Um, and this is the air outtake vent, which uh, sucks all the air out of the case. So I think really we've hit everything. Um, let's go ahead and see if I can find the proper components to get the system back up and running. So I went digging through storage and I actually found 2 gigs of DDR333 RAM on this motherboard so hopefully it's still good and we can throw it in the system and boot it up. So let's go ahead and give it a try. of 1 gigabyte of RAM is now installed. Let's go ahead and connect this thing up to a monitor and see if we can get it to boot into the BIOS. And now it is time for the moment of truth. Will this thing even turn on? Um, so I have it hooked up to my nice little compact monitor right here, and I'm not sure if I told you guys this already, but last week I went ahead and bought this at a garage sale for $3. I'm surprised at how cheap monitors are becoming these days, um, because every garage sale I go to now, there's always a monitor there for under $5, so um, it's, it's definitely weird. And this one works perfectly fine. I ran it for 24 hours, um, no issues with it. Um, absolutely great monitor. I think we're going to hang it up on the wall right there so I can have a uh, three monitor set up. But yeah, uh, I keep finding these and <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. So I'm going to turn the monitor on. Wherever the power button Oh, it's right here. <laughs> there we go. And turn the system on, which is on the floor. As you can see, I didn't really mess with cable management. Who cares? And hit that power button. Ooh, that sounds awful. Those capacitors charging sound horrible. Ooh, that fan is not working right there. Interesting. Huh. Well, they all stopped spinning, so I guess that was just an initial um, system. Whoa, look at that. What in the world? Alright, that's interesting. Have no idea what happened. I never. What? 
I've never ever seen that before. All right, let's go ahead and turn the system on. It's actually getting kind of scary. <laughs> I really hope this thing doesn't burst into flames or something. All right, system on. Oh, now the CPU fan is on and working. Let's see, can we get a video display? Oh, it works. Awesome. Um, so let me go ahead and free up my hands so we can go into the BIOS. Yeah, reboot or select proper boot device. Oh, of course we don't have a boot device. I know that. Thank you. You know what? Now I notice the CPU fan is not spinning. So maybe it's controlled by the board and the board just shuts it off when it's not hot. Um, we'll test that out in the Linux distribution. Um, I can't see where the cable would be and if it's unplugged or not. Oh, well, that was, there's your problem. <laughs> Alright, I'll plug that back in and then we can uh, get to work. I went ahead and installed Exubuntu 14.04 onto this flash drive right here, which is plugged into the computer's USB 2.0 port. This motherboard is capable of booting from a flash drive, which makes things a lot easier. This is the 32-bit edition of Exubuntu. Um, so we're going to go ahead and power the system on and see if we can get it to boot into the operating system. Uh, let me get the camera centered. Let's fire this thing up. All right, well, it is reading the USB 2.0 drive. Not a USB flash drive, sorry, I don't know what I was saying there. And we can see the Xubuntu boot screen. So we want to try Xubuntu without installation, which is the uh, default option. So it should select that automatically and begin booting into the live operating system. Maybe. Well, the flash drive load. Oh my God, I lost the camera. And the camera is back. Okay, the, the flash drive is um, active, as you can see right there, so it is doing something. I'm just not sure what. Oh god, I'm so tired. Actually, before this, I left for like three hours to have a conversation about college, so that was interesting. I'm torn between Virginia Tech or Old Dominion University, if anyone really cares. So, I don't know, just some, uh, Conversation while well, this does its thing, come on. Because Old Dominion is offering me uh, pretty much a full ride, and Tech has given me no money. Thank you, Tech. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this. So um, I'm going to cut this, and then we will resume once something happens. After 15 minutes, Exubuntu finally booted up. It took forever, but eventually we got there. I was scared for a moment that it just froze and nothing was happening. Um, but as I let it go, it eventually booted into the desktop. So I have my MediaLink wireless adapter plugged in along with my Logitech um, wireless mouse. And then I have the PS2 keyboard plugged in as well. Um, let's go ahead and try to do some stuff on this computer. First, um, Mainly when I use systems like this, it's usually for basic tasks such as word processing or web browsing. So that's usually what I like to demonstrate. Um, obviously, this isn't going to be capable of gaming or anything. Um, after all, this does have a GeForce FX 5200 in it. Um, so really, I mean, we're going to be lucky if we can play some standard definition video off of YouTube. So let's go ahead and open up Firefox. Let's see how long it takes to load. And while I'm doing that, why don't I go ahead and open up a task manager. So let's open up an instance of task manager and we can see how much RAM we're using. So um, to the right right here, this is the amount of memory we are using currently at 29% out of the one gigabyte. And then this is our CPU usage. Um, and I think the main thing that's going to be holding the system back is the video card because the Pentium 4 is going to be fine with web browsing and basic basic tasks um, such as that. But the FX 5200 is really outdated. Um, I mean, you're not going to be able to do much with it. As you can see, as I move this uh, instance of Task Manager around, I mean, it's reasonable. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube. 
Oh, you, you. <laughs> that was pretty snappy. All right, let's go ahead and go to my channel. And I don't have speakers hooked up or anything, so there's not going to be any audio. Um, and let's just go ahead and open up the What We Want episode with the external PCI Express. Alright, let's go ahead and skip this ad, once it gives us the option to. Oh, that looks awful. <laughs> We're getting like 0.5 frames per second. Look at that, that's horrible. And as you can see, our CPU usage shot up too because this GPU just isn't helping. Yeah, so that's just going frame by frame. Obviously, we're not going to be able to watch a YouTube video using this PC. So, um, as far as web browsing go, I mean, it's it's pretty responsive. But when you get to an application such as a video on YouTube, um, that's where it's going to fall short. And now it's just completely locked up. All right, there we go. Let me get out of this because it is killing our system resources. Um, what about a word processor? Let's try a by word. And of course, load times might be affected by the fact that we are using a USB flash drive um, instead of actually installing the operating system onto a hard drive, which is too much work. <laughs> We're gonna get there someday. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you, Pentium 4. Antec Gaming PC, I know you can do it. And it did it. So let's go ahead and bring this up. Maximize it. And how responsive is it? Oh, there was a small pause there. Let me try some typing something else. I'm not used to this keyboard. This keyboard's killing me. Let's try, I don't know, just like a basic task. Let's align it. Um, change the font type. How about we change the size? And then, uh, I mean, really? That's about it. We could change the color too if we wanted to. Or orange, yeah. All right, so that works just fine. Close out that. No, I don't want to save. And then, finally, let's go ahead and go around the file manager, uh, see how responsive that is. I mean, that's pretty much instantaneous. Definitely not bad. There's nothing in our files, obviously. Um, we could go into the actual, I guess, file system um, and navigate around there. You're killing me. There we go. So scroll through there. It's nice and smooth. Um, nothing really to worry about as far as the file manager is concerned. It's nice and snappy. Um, not really worried about that. So, I mean, there's not really much else I can demo on the system. There's no games installed. Uh, I'm not going to deal with that. I mean, we could, I guess we could open up mines, but I mean, <laughs> what system, honestly, what system can't run a Minesweeper game? Oops. Alright. Well... That's enough for that. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, so I think that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to like this video. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you have any critique for me, you can also leave that in the comment section as well. I always appreciate that from you guys. And I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology. Thanks for watching, guys. And on a final note, I have noticed that this fan does not light up. And I have also just found a screwdriver in the computer. Interesting. Huh.